Hey there, welcome to the Backlog. We are two brothers who have a big old collection of games and we're going to sit here and we're going to talk about them. Every game we buy, we put into an Excel spreadsheet to catalog them, obviously. And then today, we're going to pick a random one out and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. And this episode is brought to you and to us by Sail Away Coffee. That's right, folks. Sail Away Coffee, Long Island's premier coffee brewing company. You can get, you can get the grounds. Yes. You can get the cold brew, which yes. we like cold brew. Oh, yeah. And you can get your own in the link in the description using the promo code WOLF. W-U-L-F-F, -F -F, just like the YouTube channel. I was going to tell them if they can't spell it right, then just don't bother. So you can't have it. But I want people to can't spell it right so that they can get 10% off. I don't want them to have 10% if they can't spell our name right. They're here. They're at the channel. It's right there. It's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. Well, if they still can't spell it right after I told them, then it's their fault. All right, I'll pick it a random number. All right, do it. Between 1 and 621. Yeah. 252. That is, ooh, interesting. Interesting, I don't like that. It is the original Half-Life for PC. Oh, okay, yeah. that's good. Why yeah. is that weird? I, I said it was interesting because okay. I haven't played the original Half-Life since college. Okay. And I remember it being, because I played Half-Life 2 a hell of a lot more than I played Half-Life 1. Yeah. And I think I played, I like seriously played Half-Life 1 after I played Half-Life 2. And it, it is a night and day game. What do you mean? It's Half-Life 1, if it wasn't called Half-Life, you wouldn't, you couldn't tell it was from the same series. It, I, I don't think so. I mean, it, it just it feels so much different uh, than the uh, first game. Okay. Than the well, second game, rather. Well, the, there was, so Half-Life 1 is incredibly revolutionary. Yes. In that it is the first PC game to, by default, have WASD as controls. Yes, there's that. The way it told its story was very unique at the time. I don't think any other game did that where it didn't cut away to cutscenes or anything. Everything happened through your eyes, through Gordon Freeman's eyes. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, you talking to the NPCs and everything. Yeah. I mean, now looking back on it, the graphics are not good. But, yeah. well, but I mean, at the time, you, you were up against Doom and Quake. Right, and it actually runs on a modified Quake 2 engine. Damn. So... I, I see where you're getting at because in Half-Life 2, it's more about like the combine. It's like, more about the grand adventure and like what's happening around the world. Mm -hmm. um, a bigger focus on the gravity gun, obviously, things like that. The original Half-Life seems almost quaint by comparison. There was a lot more horror elements in the original Half-Life. There was a lot more uh, platforming in the original yes. Half-Life. Like first person platforming was like a big part of the game. And that's like one of the things you should never put in a first person <laughs> game is platforming because you can't, it's not really good to do. Like you, nobody can really do it right. I mean, they, it was okay in the original Half-Life. But, you know, especially today, like it's hard to go back to something I think like at that. the time that worked really well for them because of the innovative control scheme that yeah. they went with. It, they, it added like the necessary variety to it because I don't think there was vehicle sections in the game like there are in Half-Life 2. Any. The weapon variety wasn't the same as it was in Half-Life 2 and things like that. Yeah, and, and you touched that it was, uh, there's a lot of horror elements. They, they kind of scrapped that for the second one. I mean, only Ravenholm was like the horror element. Yeah, of, the, you saw so. the, the, the head munchers or whatever. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it, was, it wasn't about that. I think they realized that uh, it was kind of silly. Yeah. I mean, Half-Life 2, it's a lot more realistic. Yeah. But in Half-Life 1, you got all these polygons, like, coming out at you. Yeah. It, it wasn't scary. Except, well, I mean, when you get towards the end, you got all this, like, crazy, like, yeah. these crazy monsters happening. Yeah. Uh, it has one of the best villains in video game history. Oh, absolutely. Uh, G-Man, yeah. who's unnamed, I think, in it. Yeah. Um, he's, yeah, he's in it throughout, I think. Yeah. Not just like sneak it up on you. Mm -hmm. uh, it has one of the best endings. Yes. Uh, Not one of the best end levels though. The final level and like in the planet Zen, like that's yeah. widely regarded as like not great because I think it's primarily jumping. <laughs> yeah. But 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 the the ending is very good and it sets yeah. you up for the next one, which yeah. came out many years later. It came out like five or six years later yeah. or something. And now we're still waiting for yeah. nothing. <laughs> I mean, we got episode one and two. Have you played those? Yes, I've played those. Those are very those good. Are very good. Uh, I will say that they Valve did re-release the original Half-Life on the, using the Source engine, the engine that mm. they made Half-Life 2 on, and it's pretty good. Um, there's a fan project called Black Mesa, yes. which took, which also took the Source engine from Half-Life 2, and then completely redid it from scratch. 
like adding the physics, adding the high texture packs, adding um, the newer control schemes and things like that to Half-Life. So I know you usually say it's the end if you, if you recommend this game. If you're going to play Half-Life, play one of those because that should be much more. And they up, uh, Valve updates Half-Life Source. Right. So if you're going to play Half-Life today, play one of those. Why do we have it? Do we? I don't think we played it when it came out. Not when it came out. I, I played it a little bit later. Definitely. Right. I think we. I think we played a little. Like we played the demo of it beforehand. At least I have because I remember hearing like Half Life is an incredible game. I would always go into like PC stores and there would be the box for Half Life, and the, the sticker said "Winner of over fifty Game of the Year awards," yeah. which is the first time anybody's ever done that. And nowadays, every game you buy has that stupid logo on, and even if it doesn't win Game of the Year. Um, so I remember playing the demo of Half-Life, just to check it out, and it was fun. It's nothing from that demo was in the actual game, um, but still gives you a good feel of what the game is. And then, yeah, years later, after I played the original, uh, after I played Half-Life 2, I went back and I found the original Half-Life and I gave it a shot. And it, it's good, and a lot of it holds up, but it's just, it's not the same game. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's about the innovation that it, that it made. Right. Half Life. 2, I, I remember playing Half Life Two first. Yeah, that game had what five or six discs. Yeah, <laughs> we got it. Had five or six discs. You had to register with Steam in order to that play. That was the first it. Steam the, game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now that's all Valve does. Yep. Yeah. So, Half Life Two kind of killed Half Life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went back and I played it, and it, 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 it it's amazing to think about that that came in out in 1998. Yeah. And it sounds like that's really late for WASD to have happened, yeah. but. You had it in uh, in Quake, mm -hmm. but it was it was the multiplayer community that figured out the WSD was yeah. the way to go. So it wasn't on there by default, and it didn't come out in any game by default until Half Life. Yeah, and I think that's crazy. Yeah, Half Life was a game like I don't want to say made by fans, but it was made by a company that was really in tune with what was going on in the gaming community. Um, especially because it was very open source. The modding community for the original Half Life was insane. That's how we got Counter Strike. That's how we got Day of Defeat. One of the best multiplayer. Yeah, games that's how ever. we got so Still. many. So many other games came from Half Life. Mm. Um, and I think you know the control scheme, making it moddable, like that's just the signs of a company that understands what the core fan base is looking for. And I think that's why they. I mean, this game took a long time to make too. I think the, one of the reasons why I did that is because they wanted it to be, you know, as best as it can be, not just for themselves, but for the people actually paying for it and buying it and playing it. I would recommend it. Absolutely, me but too. While you're playing it, think about when it came out yeah. and what it did for gaming. I would also, uh, again, I will recommend uh, getting Half-Life Source, Valve's officially redone version of it, or... Uh, if you want to support the fan community, go out and buy uh, Black Mesa, which is the the fan made remake of it. I don't know if Black Mesa is finished though, so if you do go the Black Mesa route, be aware you're basically paying for an early access game. Mm. But it's a very high quality early access game. So what do you guys think about Half Life? And don't none of these Half Life three jokes? Yeah, in comments? we specifically want to know your opinion on the original Half Life. Half Life. Half-Life, <laughs> did you play it? Did you enjoy it? Are you interested now to play it now that we talked about it? Let us know down below or anywhere on the internet. Thank you guys for watching. See you later. Bye. Bye.